Okay. What are you going to do? What would you do if a girl requested a song, you said no, and she spat in your face? Oh my God. That's the end of the party. <laughs> what, what's, what's the move? We're going home. First of all, <laughs> nine times out of ten, my wife is there. So mm-hmm. it's out of my hands after that. <laughs> right. And it's on your face, but out of your hands. Yeah, exactly. So at that point... And anybody who's seen my videos or my wife's videos, we know she got hands. Yeah. So at that point, she's been training for that moment. Exactly. Do you think she's gonna notice to swing with an open palm and not a close? Oh no, she's closing her palm. Okay, so she's going. If it's she's woman, risking it all. Ring yeah, hand. Yeah. It's ring, ring hand. hand and all. Like, she, her jab. She turns a diamond around. <laughs> her hook, like listen, and our and our trainer said it. Like her hook is better than her left hook is better than mine's. Okay. Um, is she left handed? No, she's not. Oh, that's um, interesting. But that's I, I'm saying that now. If I was in that situation and she wasn't there, and I was by myself, I mean, obviously, your first response is like, "I'm gonna body slam this bitch," but you can't do that. Yeah, you gonna go to jail. No, yeah, you, me. you go to jail. You get locked. <laughs> you go to yeah. jail. You go to jail. Okay. Okay. I, don't even, I, don't even, I don't even know if we can keep this yeah. on the pod. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> you, cut this. Cut the music off. Yo, security, come get this bitch, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Come get this bitch. Because at that point, she is a bitch. She is a bitch. One hundred percent. No disrespect, 100%. Disrespect, women that are listening, but you got to understand. There's a line. If you disrespect. One hundred percent. And you're double dutch. And I had. Line. You know what's funny that you brought that up. I had quick story. I had that happen to me probably like three weeks. A girl spat. A couple of weeks. No, fuck no. <laughs> but I mean, she came over to me and she she was extremely rude about requesting the song. Yeah. Now, as DJs, we understand that comes with the job. That comes with the territory. Yeah. You, you, you have to take... You don't have to take requests, but you're going to get them. Yes. Yeah. Yo, can we... Hey, you mind if we give a request? Blah, blah, blah. Now, at the time, the city wasn't open. I was DJing to an empty room because everybody was outside. The DJ setup was inside. Yeah. I didn't see what the fuck is going on inside. So I had people giving me direction. So this chick comes in. She's just like already with an attitude, snapping her neck, doing mm-hmm. all this shit. And I'm like... Right. There's another DJ in the booth with me who had opened up for me. And he's like trying to calm her down. And he she was just like, she was just like, I mean, can we get it popping in here? Like blah blah blah. And I said, Shorty. She's using she's her doing hands. That. Like how she have she, long nails? She did. Because when the nails are when long, the nails that, clicking, the longer the added, the longer the nails, the bigger the, the attitude. attitude. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You need to put that shit on a fucking t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so just, Bump, it's just doing this shit. Doing this shit. And I'm like, I'm trying to catch myself because we all know. And, and she sometimes, go, why sometimes, come? Sometimes I got a I got a short fuse, a short temper, so I'm trying to work on that. You know, yeah, what I mean? right. I'm trying to be a better rel. Right. Um, do, what would Jesus do? <laughs> it's, it's more than that because <laughs> Jesus is a way better man than I am. Um, so, so she comes over, stabbing her neck. Blah, 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 like, can we get it popping in here? And the other DJs like responding to her. And I'm like, yo, this bitch better get the fuck up out of here, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's like, she was like, cause. We spent a lot of money in here. I said, I turned the I turned the booth off. Excuse me, I didn't turn the music off. I turned the booth off. I said, bitch, a lot of people spent a lot of money in here. I spent money in here. Like, what are you saying right now? What do you want to hear? Tell me what you want to hear and get the fuck out of my booth. Right? <laughs> she was just like, bitch. she was like, it, like, she was like, I'm saying, like, can you play blah blah blah? This is the third because we thinking about leaving because of the music. I said, bye, bitch. <laughs> yeah. I get paid to say regardless if you're here or not. I was like, bye. She was just like. It, like she was like, and the other DJs telling me like, other DJs telling me like, yo, chill, chill, chill. It's cool. Now fuck this bitch. Get the fuck up out of here. So are. that's my story. Now again, the spit like, and now if she spit it on me. Oh, nigga, I done Jesus lost my shit. <laughs> I done lost it. What is with people's entitlement at the club? I bro? do not understand that. I think yeah. they feel like because they paid. Twenty-five dollars to get in and thirty-six dollars at the bar. That's just like it's my world. Oh, regardless, if you came in there, regardless if you came in there and you pop bottles, like you ain't the only one in here popping bottles. I don't know, bro. You're spending ten bands. I'm t- I'm playing whatever you want to play. I, I, whatever you want to hear. I'm saying. But <laughs> I know I'm that's saying, not her. Again, I'm not saying even if you are spending ten bands, their approach of coming up to you, one, they don't even come over to you. They send whoever over to you, being like, "Yo, that's one." Fair. Right? Yo, can we get such and such, blah, blah, blah from a DJ? Now, if for whatever reason they do come over to you, their approach is completely different. Sure. It doesn't come from an entitled place, right? It comes, sure. yo, what's good? You know what I'm saying? We over here, blah, blah, blah. Can we get such and such? No problem, bro. I got you. I already know you spending money because yeah. they already told me you in here spending money. Yeah. yeah. So that's the deal. If you got to come and tell me you spending money, you aren't really spending money. Mm. Yeah. You know, you know, it's a classic move when, when the guy comes up and requests a song and whether you say no or you just haven't played it and he may come back and ask again. 
But at some point, he's sending the pretty girl to come 100%. request a song. 100%. As if that's going to change my mind. Yeah, that's probably you worse. Know? Which would be worse because I know she's not going to pay me any. Yeah. She's not going to tip she, me. T- she ain't t- tipping t- shit. T- she hasn't t- spent t- a dime all yeah. night. Why would she t- Why would she pay me? <laughs> Say in a strip club? Yeah, she's going to flash you a little bit. Hey, can you? Um, so I, I was wondering, everyone wants to hear. Everyone wants to hear. <laughs> Yeah. Someone was that we were having a conversation. Uh, I was having a conversation with about that entitlement, like people feeling. Hold on, Rel, introduce yeah. the episode before. Oh, come on, man! You know what it is. This is Mickey D's podcast, episode ninety-two, baby. We here, man. You know, yeah. it feels good to take a little week off. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we come back. I, I like this guys. this yeah. bi-weekly uh, schedule that we got because we're some busy dudes. Yeah. Now. Yeah, it's just open. Yeah, it's just open now. So. Entertaining you guys once a week is a lot. Yes, man. It requires a lot. But I like this. Like you said, I like coming in and like, all right, cool. We got some yeah. fresh material to talk about and shit like yeah. that or whatever. Um, anyways, as I was saying, the entitlement, we were having a conversation. They were saying, how long do you think before pre, pre-pandemic, mm. the entitlement was through the roof? Yeah. Right? Now, we've all spun here and there or whatever since we've been open or, you know, what you call it. I personally haven't, besides the story I just told, I haven't really experienced the entitlement yeah. as much. Yeah. Now, obviously, because people are just thankful to be outside. Sure. We were saying, how long is that going to last? How long do you guys think that that's going to last before people get back to their old ways and starting to feel entitled to whatever music and how <laughs> hospitality should be, et cetera, et cetera? Next week. You think next? You think in a week? No, it already. No, I said, I, I, said, I, said, don't I, said care. I said, I said, give it. Summer to, is here. I said, give it to August. I said, give it, a, give it a month, especially in LA because LA just opened a week ago. So I said, give it a month. People are getting used to being outside. Yeah. Regular Fourth of July weekend will be good. You know, everybody, it, it'll be a good environment as as, as far from the DJ's perspective. Yeah. It'll be great getting in and then going. And I said, by the time beginning of August, mid August, the entitlement will be back. Yeah, that's what that's that was my opinion. I think you jumping the gun because even when we went to go see you spend that one Sunday, people was outside tripping, and it wasn't even a line like that. They was just like, oh, you know, we'll I mean, get I, to yeah, y'all. I didn't we'll see get that. to y'all. You know what I'm saying? You know how the bouncers do. <laughs> yeah, and I felt more entitlement from the bouncer <clears throat> than the people trying to get in, and that's usually oh, so, so you know like, that. Well, I mean, bouncers think about got it. The power. Ba- mm. Bouncers been at home probably with their kids, <laughs> being yelled at by their wife, <laughs> like wait. not being the man. Waiting like, for game day. <laughs> yeah, like you know, <laughs> prepping chilling, for game day. Yeah. You know, watching, <laughs> watching the bubble NBA. You know, like they they have nobody to regulate. You yeah, know, and that's then, true. Now you know, they're back outside. It's like, hold up. They're, I got my powers back. Their women and kids may or may not be walking all over them at home. Yeah. So they may need to feel like they need to flex yeah, on somebody. somebody yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to yeah, get this. That's valid. That's valid. <laughs> Nine out of ten security guards are teddy bears outside of their Facts. shirt. You know? Yeah, so like, right. I was watching um, Sarah Marshall. And every time I see that movie, Classic, yeah. the security so guard, you know? he's the um, the bartender. Mm-hmm. Doorman. Mm-hmm. No, no, a different <laughs> movie. Different, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's movie. Uh, Knocked Out. Uh, knocked Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still funny scene though. Yeah, <laughs> but no, they had that security guy who knows all the names the fish, of the fish. Yeah, because yeah, he was a he was a bouncer oh, at yeah. Lore. Yeah, Wonderland too. You even know Yeah, the fish yeah, he, he was uh, frequently bouncing. But at the door, he was just like, "I'm gonna fuck what movie yeah. I was in. You ain't right. getting it. <laughs> I don't care how much you love me, or if you want to take a picture with me from that one movie, <laughs> you ain't getting it. Oh, yeah, man. you still ain't getting it." But yeah, man. Um, Rel, how was your weekend? You're back to work. Yeah, yo, man. My weekend is is it was lovely, man. We I had a great weekend. I was where the fuck was I, bro? I had so we just opened up Cherry Poppin. Yeah. Um, last week was our our, our first week from Cherry Poppin. Anybody that is a resident in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. you know about Cherry Poppin on Wednesdays. Um, it's a staple. We've been doing this for sh- it's ten years now, going on eleven. Yeah. Um, and I've been there from day one. Uh, so we opened up. It was it was amazing. It was a dope night. Just great, great energy, great vibes. Everybody was in there just to have a good time. Um, so that was dope. Then where the fuck was I? At? Friday I didn't spend, but I went out to Dragonfly. They changed Dragonfly. Oh yeah, out. yeah, 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 yeah. They uh, switched Dragonfly. Went to go see uh, Night Train and Bad. Shout out to them. They Dragonfly is a uh, is the H-word? no. That's Blind Dragon. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. know if they still own Blind, Blind Dragon. Dragon. No. I think they. No wait. Know. I think Dragonfly is H Wood. No, no. It's um Jared's. 
spot. Remember Jerry? We used to work with oh, him Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know what? They the, changed the it same, to um, Derriere Der- before it used the to pandemic. Be, it used to be Derriere because yeah. I was spinning in when it was Derriere. Yep. And now it's Dragonfly. But the same... What you remember it, Charlie? What you was remember? it before Derriere? It was... I don't, I don't know. remember. It was just it? something. It's on Melrose. It's it's out of... It's off the strip. You remember Charlie from, from um, Avenue? Yes. The lighting dude. He does lighting at Dragonfly. At Dragonfly. Okay. And he also does it at Highlight Room. But, you know, yeah. all those spots are H-Wood. So it's like... Shout or not Charlie, so H-Wood. Um, H-Wood. H-Wood. And, and shout out to um, Larry. Um, Larry Paul. DJ, listener of the show. He's also the manager over there. Of... Of Dragonfly. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, shout out so, to So... Um, I went there to go check those fools out. Private event on Saturday night, which was actually pretty dope. Um, we had a good time. It was an easy ass party, but what you call it? Day party at on Sunday at um, Station sixteen forty. Fucking blew that shit off the roof. Um, it's the old Echo, right? Mm-hmm. That's the old Echo. Yeah, it used Echo? to be Echo. It used to be Couture after Echo. Next to K twenty four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now it's um, it's called Station sixteen forty. Um, it looks like a. They try to make it look like a. a Train subway, yeah, yeah, subway, New York subway. Um, Did they succeed? No, <laughs> in my opinion, no. <laughs> but other people would, you know, beg differ. So, yeah, you know, it's all about perspective. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, yo, I, I, my, my weekend was great. Um, I had a really good time DJing. No mishaps, like entitlement. Spit in your face. You no know, spitting in my face. No, can we change the music? It was just all good vibes across the board at all the events. Um, I'm back at Cherry Poppin' tonight. Um, what, Wifey? Yeah. Wifey and I will be DJing tonight. Um, this weekend, I'm at... Do an LA function on Saturday. You gotta, you gotta tell us next week, bro. This shit don't air until Monday. Well, I mean, we'll already be past, so... Yeah. That's true. So yeah, stop talking about the gigs we can't go to. Yeah, me. hey man, listen, we 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 here to gloat, baby. We here, we open, baby. Let's go. Look, DJ Round Twelve, yeah. he's yeah. everywhere. You know, we're, we're here to catch him everywhere in LA. You know what I'm saying? So LA we got our platform. Saturday, the flex. Sunday, I'm doing um Pop. poppies with Night Train. Try. Um, oh, the Try Party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Fourth of July weekend, I am doing uh, uh, Dragonfly. Then the day party again on Sunday. Private shit on Saturday. So. Hey. Yeah, we working. There you go. There you we go. working. But man, shit, you you traveling. I'm doing local shit. You traveling. Yeah. What's that like? Yeah, man. Shout out to the Double Down guys. Uh, Jason, Zach, Montone. I was out in Atlantic City. They took care of your boy. Um, Did you go run a mile? I didn't. No, no. but we walked like five because the night, so the night I spun at Kiss Kiss Thursday, my set was until like 12.30. So Zach's like, I'll come early and I'll take you up and down the boardwalk and just show you. That's a long ass boardwalk. It's like walking the Vegas Strip. So right. by the time we got back, you know, he runs like 10 miles a day and right. bikes, yeah. you know. Yeah. So by the time we got back, my legs were done. And I'm like, I still got to stand for another <laughs> yeah, I was three like, hours. You're a DJ after that shit? Like, Zach's still there. It's like bouncy. Yeah, he's just like, man, I would love to go another round. Like, yeah, me too. But you know, I got a DJ. <laughs> yeah. No, um... So yeah, the hospitality was uh, off the roof. Um, these guys, they know how to uh, take care of their talent. Um, yeah, so Thursday night is typically their industry night at Kiss Kiss, but they just got the, I think they just opened Thursday, so it was a little slow. There was no big announcement or big rollout. Um, but with who was there, it was all hip hop. Um, and you know that's just how we kept it. So it was actually a good exercise for me to get reintroduced to my hip hop crates. Since, oh, nice. Yeah, so it's like is it, is it, testing was, stuff out. I was going to ask what, what the format there. is over there. Yeah, Kiss Kiss is all hip hop. Funny thing is, in the moment, you know, everything happens fast in the moment. So I didn't really prep for this. But in the moment, I'm trying to think, how can I get to Torculator without just dropping it? <laughs> Obviously, we can do that. No one will give a shit, really. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so I used um, Pitbulls Don't Stop the Party to build it. And, and I'll shout out to Chris <laughs> Devine. Um, Chris exactly. Devine, he was there. And he was just like, I'm actually surprised that this poppy stuff that you're playing is working for this crowd because typically they just want it all hip hop and even deeper, you know? Mm. Um, like they want trap shit. They want trap, yeah. But I saw it was a Damn, mix in. I and need I to go do kiss, all? kiss. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jason will line you up. I know, Jason already hit me up Jason? about it. So. <laughs> Sounds like they serve Hennessy. Yeah. But I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Shout out to Jason Wise, man. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was like, I don't know, man. With what the tools I have, let me just use this pit bull. <laughs> like everyone knows this. Yeah. Everyone, there's enough white people You'd out there singing. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 like, well, white girls love pit bull. They're like, oh my god, he's so Latin, you know. <laughs> But he's like, but he's global, you know, he's not just Latin. Mr. Worldwide. Yeah, Mr. Worldwide. 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 Organization. Dale. 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 <laughs> Shout out to Pitbull. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, keep writing them checks. Yeah. Um, so I used that to get to twerk it later. And, and I, that was for me, that was just the funniest worked, part huh? of the night. Yeah. For, like, again, for it's like, you just, it's sometimes, because, you know, it's one of those situations where, you're on the floor and you're drinking with your friends. And sometimes you dance and sometimes you don't, but you stay on the floor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I can see somebody shaking to twerk it later, because I ultimately haven't tried that song out in a big crowd at the, up until that point because I just haven't done much. So I saw somebody shaking. I was like, all right, cool. Like, you know, it's good to know. And then and in the last 30 minutes, I just went in on the latest hood shit. Like mm-hmm. anything, like anything that's remotely that. Um, and did they respond and, well to that stuff too? And I think I think it was okay. It was a little bit more thinned out, but um, I think overall it was cool. And then same time, I'm just like, man, I just want to hear these songs in a club just so I can get a feel for them. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna work or not, but that's that's what you guys promote here. I'm gonna give you. Did that. you play any Pooh Shiesty? No, hmm. no. Yeah, I didn't get to Little that money one. Bag, yo. Oh yeah, I know you played that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you yeah. love him. <laughs> yeah, I like Money Bag, yo. <laughs> I got time today. <laughs> Man, Uber's a, Uber's a, what do you say? I forgot. I love that line. There's something about Uber. <laughs> she, oh, she want to she wanna drive in the Rover, but the Uber is closer. Woo, something like it's a that. It's a bar. Yeah. Talk to him. Um, Yo, speaking of which, this is yeah. completely random, but did you guys catch when Clay Thompson was in LA and uh, paparazzi was outside? I think it was Hyde. And he's jumping in the car, and then these two girls and his boy are about to jump in the car, but he oh, sees yeah. paparazzi, so he tells so he just gets in the car <laughs> and like doesn't let them in. And then the <laughs> and then the girls gotta play it off. And then the, the paparazzi still catches them down the street, wow. catching up the same girl, picking wow. up the same girls. Wow. <laughs> Yo. Shout out to Clay. Yeah. <laughs> He's a real one. He, he hit the oh shit button. Uh, yeah. Oh shit. He still look crazy though. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, said, no, I'm gonna have y'all walk half a mile over yeah. here. I'm gonna pick you up over here. Yeah, like the paparazzi like, don't got legs, yeah. right? <laughs> and a zoom. Right. <laughs> hey, let's not forget who's not on the injured list here. <laughs> hey. Hey. Right. Oh, yeah. Um. So then Saturday, I went to HQ. Uh, they have a club and a day party. I went to the day party, and CJ was gonna perform. Whoopty. Yeah. Did you tell him you saw him on a zoom once? No, we, the funny thing is like ass, <laughs> we we were we were in his cabana area and and I'm just like I really don't care to tell this guy I interviewed him like uh-huh. <laughs> he's with his people he's he's got his 20 chains on holding it down like that's another thing New York was in the house if I saw one chain on someone I saw 10 chains on someone yeah, like they do not play jerseys well no they weren't allowed to wear jerseys even though a few got in but hats the New York hats and the chains were in full effect. Mm-hmm. And shout out to Jason Craig. He pulled up with a couple of his DJ homies. Up. From El Paso? Yeah. He Who's said, he yo, I, I got a network, man. It's time. It's go time. I <laughs> said, yo, him, come. Man. Come out. Meet these guys. Was he wearing any chains? <laughs> no, he has some wrestling shirt on. Of course. He <laughs> <laughs> sounds, like, sounds, sounds, like sounds about El Paso. <laughs> on brand. <laughs> but yeah, his homies, Remy and Chris, pulled up. Um, also DJs, um, DC and New York. And, um, <clears throat> and they had a great time. Um, but yeah, it was... Listening to how the DJ set up HQ, interesting, um, and and you know it was just super. It was just super a super New York set, mm-hmm. which you know Jersey obviously not far. You're if you're in Jersey this time of the year, you're either from Philly or New York, um, or if you're in Atlantic City, I should say. Um, so and I didn't stay for the performance. Zach and I had to get out of there, get ready for the wood, and the wood was a lot of fun. Let me tell you something. If you have a crowd. That will go, that will get Ratchet to insert Ratchet song, biggest Ratchet song, and then later on dance to Maniac and Hey Mickey. You got yourself an all right crowd. Damn. That's a, that's a wide yeah. range. Song. No, no, yeah. It's, it's, it's sounds open, like Santa open Barbara. Format. It does open. Sound like Santa Barbara. Um, <laughs> Santa Barbara. They, they were like down for whatever. And again, um, it was, it was a pretty decent sized crowd. But again, 
if they weren't dancing, they were they stayed on the floor and drank. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So they were just waiting for the the Their next song, thing yeah. they kick in or whatever next song or whatever they wanted to dance to. <clears throat> and there is something different. This is coming from an LA guy. So East Coast guys don't kill me on this and say and say I told you or or have anything that's really remotely like that to say. Playing Dreams and Nightmares for a Philly crowd is different. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine. It's like, okay, and I, and I, was, so I was telling this to Zach. I told him, yeah, like this is the big, typically the biggest song of the night in LA. One of the biggest songs. The bottle popper spend, everyone sings along. It's just a big moment and the DJs always save it towards the end of the night. And um, so he, he really didn't, I don't think he knew that because he doesn't know much about the LA culture and club scene. Um, so I told him, but playing it out there, playing it tonight in the wood was different. It was mm. like just different Amplified. than anything else I've seen or like, experienced. Like Meek was there. Huh? Meek was there. Meek was it's there. Fair. Like his yeah. cousin was there. <laughs> this is the church. <laughs> exactly. No, and yeah, it church was. Says, hey, church at Dreams, <laughs> Dreams and Nightmares is the gospel. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes. White, black, Hispanic. Knows every word. Every, every, every color was singing. That song, mm-hmm. and then everything else I played that was by me after that of work. Course, but no, what Crazy, an incredible man. crowd! Um, they're doing something special over there. Did you play Drake? What uh, What's next? Oh shit! I didn't play. That. Oh, you man. trip! Listen, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to ask you because I wanted to see what how how people responded. I've been getting really mixed, mixed response right from that track. It, I, yeah. I, there's times where I played it or I've seen it been played, and Apes. like it goes yeah. insane. Yeah. But then there's times where I've played it and it's flatline. Like, no, like I get nothing from it. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, and I'm just like, but it's a similar crowd to the crowd that I played it and I got a response from it. Yeah. So I'm just like, hey, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. Like, just keep throwing it out there to see, you know, if it's going to work or not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, everyone, I think after every set, you can, you, you can look back and say, ah, oh, I forgot to play that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. But Somewhere. there are so many new songs to play. Not there, there's not really, but there's just a lot. Like for me personally, I wanted to get off my chest and I must have skimmed right over that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is a really good topic and it's kind of a curveball because I'm looking at our, our notes and, and it just struck me that this is a good topic to just talk about because you brought up Dreams of Nightmares. Mm-hmm. And then at the bottom, we also put that Twitter slowing down and Twitch or whatever, right? Like whatever mm-hmm. the next conversation is. But with that being said, I do recall Twitter being wild over some tweets. And I got to bring it up because everybody kind of involved in subtweeting each other is all people that we know we're close with. Okay. And so we can blank this out names or whatever, but I'm pretty sure they know who they are. So shout out to Sean Dickerson. All right. Who runs mm-hmm. a great party over yeah. at the highlight Man. room. Sadiq, I, was, Sadiq. I, went, I was there two prior, weeks ago. prior to the pandemic. <laughs> right. It was um, probably one of the best. I mean, still still. Is, and let me set this up because yeah. it sounds like a bad sentence, but Prior to the pandemic, it was one of those just like different parties meant to play R&B and um, shit. It was the first time I ever hung out with my girlfriend. So it was like dope spot. That's where I met her. Yeah. And then um, and so it's just a dope vibe. Right. And then pandemic happens. Take a huge break. It comes back. And now it's like more exclusive than ever. Is it? Like, like, I don't even like they don't even promote it. Right. Like it's that kind of a party. like, Like, yeah. Because you got your Drakes, your LeBrons, yeah. your every NBA I had to athlete. I walk through the back door to Chris, get in that bitch. Chris Brown is there every week. You know, all the, the elites of the elites, right? And then, of course, the new Rory Mall podcast ends up being like a whole ad. Yo. Yep. <laughs> and all I learned is that Rory might not like Night Train as a DJ. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was, right, right. Was right. it that same night that he was there? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? It, it is. Was. I was, it, was, it, was. It, was, it was. It was. It was. Because that was the same night I was there with yeah. that train. Yeah. But anyway, shout out to Sean, man. Like, I, I got nothing but love for him. He's a good friend of mine. And I think, you know, we can all talk transparently about this. But Sean had a tweet where he said, um, stop playing uh, Swag, Swag Surf. Surf. Okay. That, that was the, first, that that was the first tweet. Okay. Okay. And <laughs> then later that night, he, he tweeted, update. DJ played Swag Surf. I'm also thinking that's also Night Train, to be honest with you. Nah. Because it was, I think it was that night where he was, I don't know. I could be wrong, right? You didn't hear it that night? Nah. And these and I, are, I mean, granted, I left, I yeah. left like right before 2 a.m. And, but he told, Train told me that they went to like 2.30. So 
I highly doubt that he played at it that after point. two thirty, after yeah. two o'clock. Yeah. I'm with you on that, and I, I'm not pointing this at Nitrine. No, yeah, so, yeah. So, so this doesn't come off this way. But anyway, Sean tweets update uh, DJ play Swag Surf, and so the next day he says we need to come together as a community. Maybe I should quote this correctly so that, <laughs> that there's no uh, confusion here. But it started a really interesting conversation because some of our friends definitely replied, but there was no ats involved. Of course not. So that's what <laughs> was also funny. So let's see. Sean doesn't tweet that much, does he? Uh, two days ago. The, the great thing about Sean is that he'll always uh, he'll screenshot his tweets and put it on his stories on IG. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, I actually, while you're looking, you find it? I found it. Okay. So, uh, da da da. He said, update, Swag Surf was played tonight. It be your own DJs. It be your own. <laughs> <laughs> and then here is the, the tweet that went out crazy, I guess. He said, we're going to have an honest conversation as a community about the records that need to be retired from the club. Because I promise there are a lot of records that we don't want to hear anymore and y'all won't stop playing them. Clearly directed to DJs. Yeah. Sean runs some of the most elite parties in L.A., like, I'm not going to even sugarcoat it. Right? Yeah, 100%. And the only reason I really bring this up is because his partner, Julian Edwards, mm-hmm. who also a great guy, um, first thing he puts is Dreams of Night, where Nightmares intro needs to be at the top of the list. Hmm. And so, and then, of course, he's probably referring also to Swag Surf, right? And so, you guys are working DJs. I'm not as much. But when I was still gigging around, those two songs kind of made the party go up a little. Those And they brought bottles out. Those, I mean, confetti was being dropped. Man, what? Listen, we'll stop playing them when your people stop responding to them. If it ain't broke, plain and simple. don't fix it. That's, like, that's just, it's, it's that simple. I get it. You don't want to hear shit because you're in the club five, four or five days exactly. out of the week and you probably hear it. Three times mm-hmm. and you, you over it. I get it. You don't think us as DJs, we think we don't think we we're tired of this shit. But listen, we're not gonna go down that route. Hey, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Half the shit that we play, we're tired of hearing. But All we, of it. we know, we know what the fuck what it's working. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, it brings out bottles, confetti mm. comes out. Like this shit works. If I play swag surfing and I didn't see the whole fucking crowd erupt, right? Surfing? <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna stop playing it. If I'm gonna play Dreams and Nightmares, and like you said, every white, black, Hispanic, Asian polka dot person is screaming, wait, hold on, wait a exactly. minute. It, it, we, it what works. do you want us to do about it? What do you want us to do it? it? Then don't come over to me and be like, yo, we gotta get this shit popping. Cool, I gotta play Swag Surfing. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta play dreams and nightmares, <laughs> and it's not, and it's, it, and not to sound like we're defeated, and that's the only thing we know. We just know what works, and it's a psychological thing, man. When you like, there are certain sounds, tastes, flavors, smell that take you back to a thing or mm. take you somewhere. Mm-hmm. So when you hear, when you hear that piano and dreams and nightmares. It's gonna, it's gonna make you, it's gonna take you, you somewhere, take your chills. and you it's gonna make you want to spend money. Leading up to the club, when guys are prepping and they're and they're pre gaming and whatnot, and they're talking about what you're gonna do when they play this, how many bottles you're gonna spend when you play this. Like I have to imagine that conversation is happening going into the party because everyone that buys a table is all about flexing, mm-hmm. and they're always being challenged by someone to flex even harder. So to me, it's a whole psychological thing when when you when you play a dreams and nightmares or insert bottle popping overused song it's bringing money to him like there's no there's probably no way you can figure this out but every dj stop playing dreams and nightmares at those clubs and and see if the bottle um you know the 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 purchases go down it's hard it's hard to figure that Listen, out right side, side note think about it this way they're, they're saying that but how hard is it to break a record you know what i'm saying how hard is it to play a new record if everybody doesn't know the record or there's some new song that you want to hear because you're tired of the old song. How like how is that gonna go? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the same thing. Like you're talking about the newest Drake song getting mixed reactions. Yeah. So it's like, what do you mean? I think it it goes. Bo- I think it boils down to what you're saying, where they're in the club every night, so they're mm-hmm. they're just kind of numb. 
yeah. to the to reaction, of it, right? And that's understandable. Mm-hmm. And I think if you bring it back, <clears throat> even if I compared it in in with Mag, or you compare it with in a, being in a room uh, as a DJ, right? As like um, a creative, but also you know you're providing a service. Like you can't really be as a DJ. We're not selfish, right? Like we can you be. Can't be. Like you can, but you shouldn't. Yeah. Right. Because similar to Mag, like. Do I buy clothes that I'm going to wear only for the store? Hell no. no right. I got a business to run. <laughs> I need shit to sell. And what I wear is not all the time what sells. Like, And so I got to I gotta cater to the crowd, the demo that comes in. Mm. Similar as a DJ. Different rooms are have different reactions exactly. and have different things going on. Now, I may understand how some of those records should probably not be played as Sadiq. That's you could put that out there. Yeah, neither that's one of those tracks. Neither one of those mm-hmm. tracks should be played. That's so that's right. fair. Yeah, sure, that's right. fair. Yeah, and then and then specifically to to Sean Julian again, they have some of the the most elite crowds in the city. I can see how you know some people that come into their parties are might be too cool or have done are out every other night. You know what I mean? That they don't have to worry about work in the morning. <laughs> like, you yeah. know, so that like they've heard the songs, these songs over and over and over again. But, you know, the reality is like, you got to let, you know, the DJs do their thing. That's why they are where they are. Mm. And so I say that because then our boy Dre Sinatra <laughs> came and tweeted. And I'm just, I'm just out here just starting shit, you know, yeah. just to hey, push listen, it together because we got entertainment to do. <laughs> yeah. So then not... That long after Sean's tweet, Dre jumps in and says, you know, to nobody, let the DJs DJ. Mm. I don't care who you think you are. Mm. And if you want to change the selections, go pick up a laptop, buy Serato, download thousands of songs. I had to tell this female last night, I'm not playing Meg Thought Shit at 11 p.m. <laughs> I remember, I, I, I remember uh, reading that tweet that Dre sent out. Yeah. So here's also something else to consider. If if they're you said Nitrain was done at two, right? And then another DJ went on? No, 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 no. I'm saying I left at two. Sorry, there Nitrain. was a tweet before that one even okay. where it said, because it started the same way. It says, let the DJs DJ, let the bartenders bartender, bartender yep. let the security secure, and let the promoters promote. Yeah. Yeah. And then he and then he retweeted it. And I think it was like Audio One that responded to him first or something like that. And then I think that's when he reposted uh the what you call it. Um, but to answer your question, I left at two. Night train. When I talked to Night Train the next day, he said he ended it. He ended at two thirty because I said, "Yo, what time did you guys end?" Uh, end because y'all didn't look like y'all were anywhere near finished when I was leaving. This so was where this was at Sadiq. Oh, at Sadiq. So, yeah. so this is what I'm thinking. Um, just to dissect this even more, we should more. call Night Train. Um, we he ain't awake. <laughs> we uh, he's back. If outside. if he's not talking about Night Train, then the DJ whoever was on before or after and played. If they played swag surfing, played it at the wrong time. Yeah, I, 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 I wanna, I wanna say, uh, I think I know who the DJ was because I think it was the following week, but I don't want to put that DJ on. on I don't live. think it was Sadiq though. I think it was like a like a different night. Oh, okay, okay. Because I was like, if it was, that if it would was make Sadiq, more sense, yeah. and that sounds was, like that's what it is. I think it, it was is. a Thursday or a Friday. So let me not paint the picture that this happened at Sadiq, but like, I'm just saying the what Sean uh, observed, I guess. Maybe he felt that the DJ, who's his DJ in, in his wording, um, just didn't see his tweet. And maybe like then played the song that he asked not to be played. Or, or he probably played it as a joke. Maybe he saw the tweet and it was like, I'm going to fuck maybe with Maybe Sean was him. drunk. I mean, that's some shit just, I would do Yeah, sure. that's some shit I definitely would maybe do. Maybe Sean was just if trying I to troll and was drunk and was just talking shit just mm. for fun. I, mean, I don't know the guy, so you know, I don't know. You got to nah, consider Sean's a Look, Sean's a... Eloquent, well spoken, fucking will find some wine that fucking you know oh, like, yeah, this this man yeah, is yeah. like, you know, he's top tier <laughs> taste levels. Yeah. That's why he buys shoes from us. But <laughs> hey. but besides all that, like I, I definitely understand his point of view and his perspective. I think it's just um it's a little too easy to give your opinion when you haven't like been in the driver's seat. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and in in his defense, I will say that sometimes DJs panic and just throw on 
a song, a, a swag surfing. That could also happen. But listen, for sure. you but know, listen, especially but especially that, with a crowd that like a hard hip hop crowd uh, or, or hip hop crowd that's hard to read. Like you're just gonna hit the oh shit button and throw in but a swag surfing. If you if, if that is the case, that's great that they would go to a track like that because they know that as opposed to being like. Oh, we panicking, and then you play some shit. People are like, "Yo, what the Something fuck?" Something obscure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People are like, "Yo, what the fuck?" Be like, "Ah, ah, ah." Mm-hmm. And you're like, "Hey, so, like, listen, all right, cool. Take a breath, reset, and then go back, man. Listen again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's all I'm saying." And and I would imagine he has his pick of the litter, and he's cool with all his DJs. So yeah, yeah. It's a, it's an easy. It should be an easy fix or a conversation on the side to just. I mean, look, because everyone's going to do their own thing, regardless of whether he's promoting or not. Sean's not the first guy, or uh, as a promoter, it won't or be the last. venue, or <laughs> oh, no, yeah. whatever yeah. that has ever put. I mean, there's venues with lists of do songs not play, do, do not, not play, play songs, yeah, right? And so, if that's in your personal, you know, like preference, hey, by all means, I think that's all good. It's just got to be communicated. Mm. Um, so I don't he think did. there's <laughs> on Twitter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. oh, don't get it wrong. Like, well, our, um, uh, my boys from um, Supreme Look, if Team. if it's not my email, I... <laughs> yeah, exactly. My boys from Supreme Team, Adib, he's the same way. He'd be like, yo, we got to retire Swag Surfing. I said, first of all, your crowd is the number one person to request that mm-hmm. shit. Hey, can we get Swag Surfing in this bitch? Um, I don't know what to tell you, bro. It's a HBCU party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they, Howard is in here, exactly. baby. Like, they brought their surfboard. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Oh, they ain't never seen the beat. We got Clark alumni here. Yeah. <laughs> he got the record queued up. They already yeah. like this. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and he's like, you just know. You see, DJ you just, see me right. you see me right. The DJs just look at the guys with the arms around their backs and like, yo, they're ready. They're just sitting there. Like, these I got y'all. Why are they chain links? Hey, so that's what I'm saying. Hey, man, listen. I get Looking it. Like, like, like I said, you, you have your preference, but if you're not in the driver's oh, yeah. seat, you won't understand. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Hilarious. For the record, I didn't play swag surfing this past weekend. But you played Dreams and Nightmares. I did play Dreams. Yeah. Hey, when in <laughs> Rome. You're in Philly. Yeah, when in Rome. Yeah, way, exactly. <laughs> when in Rome. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, nice. that's a great conversation. And I think that pretty much caps off my uh, trip to Atlantic City. Um, what you got coming up, though? Um, Boston. Yeah. Back at the Grand, my Ooh, favorite. Hey, nice. And my guys, big, big night. There's four tables on the stage, and my guys just bought all the tables. So it's one of their birthdays. So, oh boy, that's gonna Tom be a big night. Bring, bringing out Shit. Sam yeah. for that. Are you when when are you when are you at the grand? Oh, you got a plus three plus four. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. I was gonna hit with the plus one. I heard Sam. I said, all right, let me let me let me. <laughs> <laughs> You're quick. You're quick with that. Let, let me add a song. My bad. Plus five. <laughs> when, when, when you at there? July 10th. July 10th. Ooh. Ooh, come right. one, come on. Hey, listen, Shit, listen. It's going to be a celebration. This, you know, it's a baby shower this past weekend for, for Andy. And, oh, yeah. Um, listen, I was sitting there with the wives and all the, yeah, that's you right, know, right. All the husbands are out of town. I'm just yeah. like, all right, well, you know, <laughs> we got the kids. We yeah. Can't. yeah. <laughs> Sean held it down. Yeah. Sean comes back with all the gossip, girl. Yeah, let me yeah. tell you what danger yeah. zone's going through. Like hey, this one don't like none of y'all yeah. <laughs> When you get settled, let me know because we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, so I was like, I can't stand him. Yeah. <laughs> like, shit, let me tell you this. Oh, man. Um, yeah, man. That, oh, yeah, most shit. of you know that's my favorite venue, so I'm excited to get back there for that. And Sam, of course, was looking forward to a trip out of the house. Um, <laughs> she deals with kids hey, all you day. You take her out yeah, nowhere? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, she deals with kids her, all day, man. What you, want me to do? what you want me to do? Oh, my God. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and you said you got cherry popping coming up, right? I'm doing cherry popping tonight again, actually. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Sean, all right, so everything's open, man. Like, what's your future with DJing? Like, what's the moves? What are you doing to get out and get booked? Uh, nothing. Baby nothing. said nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, bro, you got to open it, give yeah. me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> How much you charge you? Exactly. I'll do it for free. <laughs> no, 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 I ain't doing nothing for free. I don't put the dollars in to get to where I'm at, but, you know, I, I'm probably going to. I don't st- think you have. Mm. All right, that's fair. I mean, because because you just been DJing on Twitch, right? But I've been around. 
Yeah, but, but that, that 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 doesn't exactly it is, it equate to that doesn't equate to to my reputation as a DJ. But mm-hmm. at least it says that I'm willing to learn. I'm here to say like I'm not gonna shortcut it. You know this what I'm saying? This ain't a game. Yeah, exactly. I take it seriously. Like I've mm-hmm. always done that. The same way we go out, and I'm analyzing the DJ just as much as y'all. Right, but prior to the no, pandemic, people didn't DJ. know you. Fuck. <laughs> what was that? I said I'll stop analyzing DJs. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I'm here to drink. I'm officially <laughs> right. over that. Oh, man. Fuck that I'm off shit. the clock. Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of kidding. analyzing shit, shout out to um, the opener that I had at um, Kiss Kiss, Evan. Uh, I told him I shout him out. He did a really good job. Send me up, and I think it's important we highlight the openers and guys that mm-hmm. you know need to be praised and and you know sung. So shout out to him. Um, moving on. People, when you say you've been out putting in the work prior to the pandemic, they didn't know you were out um, researching as a DJ. They just, if anything, they just saw you as one of Rel's boys that's mm-hmm. just there to hang out and so, show support. Well, that's what it would be. It would be a vouch. It would be like, yeah, you know, he he's ready to do this, you know? And if yeah. I'm not, then he wouldn't say so. It's that simple, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, I can't expect to just pop up as a DJ and expect to get gigs. Yeah. Like... I'm ready to put in whatever work I have to, like, you know, with Check One Two, for instance. Like, that's something that I've talked about and, you know, something I'm looking forward to doing. Bar mitzvahs. I'm with yeah. it. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I just want to get my feet wet and then we'll see where it goes from there. Nope. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Sounds like you got some stuff on the horizon. Hey, man, we'll see. We'll see. Um, and we got to throw our own parties, too. So, you know of what course. I mean? That's, that's yeah. where it's going to really get started. Really. Um, shout out to Cutswell Diesel out in Scottsdale. This had me laughing for a long time. They had at their um, big venue, Riot House, the Sons and Four Guy host. If that isn't the most intelligent, g- just genius booking of the year so far, because this guy went viral Yo. for knocking people out or, you know, whatever. And, and, and it was like, you know, even Devin Book tweeted him. I don't know if Dev did, Devin Booker did anything for him, but yeah, he yeah. definitely got recognized. He took him to game one of Western Conference Finals. Boom. So so there's that. And you have to, it's, it's in this industry, it's about seizing the moment, right? And Cutswell and those guys did an incredible job of being on their toes and making the most of the moment by having this guy um, host. And every picture he took, he had, you know, four fingers up. Cause he's just known as that sons and four guy, and he had the jersey on. He probably had the same outfit on. To be honest, he's got to roll did. around with that I outfit, did, like to. like Mufasa. Bro. You got to roll yeah. around the same outfit. There's Everybody a video of him on one of those sports uh, IGs, and it's literally just him going, "Yeah, that's yeah. it." <laughs> like just like one person here, one person there, one person. There. Oh my god, damn! Bro. And last time I checked, you can't wear jerseys in the ride house yeah. or any of their venues. But I imagine for him, it's like you have to wear that jersey. You have to wear that because they probably wouldn't good. recognize him without it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if he's not wearing the jersey and you're like, I'm sorry, I just don't. And he just does this. Sons of four. Puts up the four. Oh, you're that guy. <laughs> shit, yo, man. Yo, congrats to that dude, man. Get your bag, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who got a bag from beating the shit out of somebody outside of the boxer? Outside of MMA. 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 <laughs> outside of an MMA fighter or a boxer. Who, who the fuck oh, gets man. a bag from beating the shit out of somebody? I'd be Paul. curious <laughs> to know how much he no, got. I mean, to he's, in the, he's in the boxing <laughs> ring, though. Yeah. What, what do you think they, if they paid him, what do you think they paid him to host? Nah, he got comped everything. He's just, just a comp ah, in a yeah, table. Two yeah. K. I, I think he got two K. No, nah, yeah, like I think more I think than DJs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I think he got a little. something. you get more than DJs. What? He's in traction. Yeah, I think he got it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And now your shit. Now that the Suns won last and night, I wonder still, how many people. Go, but is he too. smart enough to be I'm business minded? You know I'm sure he is. He's white. Okay. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> um, shit, I saw an action figure of this fool. Oh, huh? right. I saw an action figure. They made Already? they designed an oh, yeah, action dude, figure of yeah, this fool. Yeah. All right. Well, assuming that he's a part of that, <laughs> I'm sure he, is, he probably right. is. Yeah. You're right. He's what? <laughs> he wants all the now, action. Now, what I said makes sense. <laughs> I'm talking action figure. It's a business cool, mind. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're white. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I say a G and some and a table. Bring yeah, one hundred percent. Bring a bunch of friends. Like have a good time. Like you know what I mean. Like how many friends you got? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Everything. Oh, oh my god! All right. Um, yeah. Shout out to them. And they might go sons and four of this next series. Yeah, yeah. for real. Mm. Shout mm. out to PG. Yeah, with that, with that ending. <laughs> oh man. I'm going to game three. <laughs> See what happens. Oh nice. Are you going to game three? Yeah. Oh, oh man. sick. 
Um, ah, what do you do, man? If you're the if you're the Clippers, like you know what? Let me let me say this real quick. I I feel for Paul George because he's had Why? this. Exactly. Let me tell you, he's <laughs> had this thing about him being a no show for the playoffs. You know, one a great regular season player, but doesn't show for playoffs, and he didn't really show for the first round, right? For the most part, you expected more. Uh, toward, towards the end, he threw up some decent numbers. And then when they played Dallas, right? Right. Yeah, and yeah. then the second round, he did pretty, he did fine. Um, and then yesterday, and I think he had like 38 game one or some 30 game no, one. Oh, yeah. He still, he still had a right. game. Yeah. He, he they a lost, game. but, you know, he had a good game. No Kawhi. Side note, it's fucked up. I read a tweet that said, even with Kawhi out, Paul George is still the second best player on the team. Yo, I saw man that shit put up too. like 40. I'm so like, oh my right, God, on, this man. is terrible. They got let this nigga right, live. Moving, moving forward, um, he has. Two great shots, right at the end. He to put him up. Then Devin Booker, it's a shot, and then he puts up, and then he makes another one, right. So you're thinking, yo, playoff P is here, right? Mm -hmm. And then he misses two free throws, and then they lose. Like if he missed two free throws and they would have won, it would have been like, all right, you yeah. still made two. He had to shots. make one free throw because they, they, they were up by one by the time he made it, and, and he, him making both of those free throws, but it gave them, you know, at least a comfortable lead, I like am forcing them sick. So where I feel bad for him is that he's got this shadow casted upon him, yeah. this rain cloud that just follows him everywhere yeah. he goes. Nah, he, he put that. There though, you're 85 percent free throw shooter yeah. from the no, line. No, it's all him. It's all yeah, in his 100%. head. When you're that talented, because I head. see, I see people, I see people trying to be like, "Yo, y'all got to give Paul George a break, blah blah." Bro, we not saying, "Oh, he missed a three pointer to tie the game or win the game or some shit like that." That's understandable. Yeah, it's fucking free throws, bro. Yeah. You're 85 percent free throw shooter. Like, it don't. No, I, that, like, that's a big mental. That's a huge mental like mental, breakdown you know? at the line. You know what I'm but saying? But I think that's been his whole thing. Like with even with this playoff P stuff. Like it's it's all mental. He's got it. He needs to go see somebody to get his mental game. Yeah, 100. Right? Because his skill and talent is 100 percent there, yo. He's a monster. And yeah. at the same time, yeah. boogie boogie. Uh, Boogie got mad because we all know like Boogie pushed Booker. Boogie fucked up on that last play mm -hmm. from Jay Crowder to um to Aiton with the when he threw the lob down. Mm -hmm. There was a lack of effort. Who, man. Why wouldn't you cut the fucking basket off? No, if you're inbounding yeah. the ball from under the basket, everybody know, I don't I'm not even a ball player, bro, <laughs> and I know that shit. Everyone was like, why would you guard this nigga straight up? Like, you cut the basket off, bro. I was like curling around that pick, you gotta push him back. You got like, who cares if you get called mm -hmm, for a foul? You, you're mm -hmm. giving up a bucket. Like, put him Stupid. on the line. Stupid. I'll take my like, chances you're sitting on the line. There, like, oh, cut the basket off, make him point, throw it out to the and force them to shoot the fucking this, three. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I'm like yo, it was it was it was a it was a terrible it was a it was a great call by a uh, great play called by Monty mm -hmm. Williams. He's mm -hmm. killing these fools. Shout out to Ty Lue though, because Ty Lue has been coaching his ass off. But it was just it was just an overall bad play on the Clippers. Yeah. Behalf. For the record, Aaron Booker definitely set an illegal screen. He did. He did. He did. He well, did. no, at that but, time you're you're pushing, you're doing everything illegal yeah, to not like because yeah. you're, you're not as you're well. Gonna, that's the one time you're going to tell the ref shit. you're not going to yeah. end yeah. the game on that call, yeah, exactly. right? You're not exactly. going to three seconds in the key, you know, mm -hmm. push like you're mm -hmm. not going to unless it's blatantly obvious, right? Even Jordan had a little push at the mm -hmm. end, you know. What and they're saying um, Aiton like pulled down on fucking what you call it, yeah. 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 So you're not you're not going to call any of that. You can't see all that. They got three refs, and you still can't see all that. It doesn't matter. You got to let them be physical. Yeah. All right, moving on from that depressing shit to more depressing shit. <laughs> um, did you guys see that T Pain was depressed for four years after Usher told him he wrecked the music industry with Auto Tune? Yeah. You guys look into that? Man, listen, y'all just brought that to my attention because I heard what was going. I I heard the aftermath of like people giving giving T Pain his flowers or shitting on Usher, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? And then you know when we talked, I was like, holy shit. I love Usher, but he's out of his fucking mind. Yeah, I'm disappointed. <laughs> yeah, in Usher. extremely disappointed in him. He's out of his fucking mind. Like, what? He killed music? Um, Usher, he said, Usher was my friend. I'm going to tell you something, man. You kind of fucked up music is what Usher said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he was like, yeah, man, you really fucked up music for real singers. I was like, what did I do? I came out and I used auto tune. He was like, yeah, you fucked, you fucked it up. I'm like... But I used it. I didn't tell everybody else to start using it. I mean, it was no, an exactly. industry standard, period. 
Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's what people don't even, a lot of people don't even know how auto-tune works. Just because you use auto-tune don't mean you can sing. You have to know how to sing in order to use it. And that's the problem. That's the misconception already. Yeah. So for Usher to say that as a person in the industry since he was whatever, like 13, he, that's really messed up. That's yeah. trash. Yeah. Especially for somebody as talented as T-Pain. Yeah, Usher, you, Usher should know. Like, I know you got talent. So he I'm probably not gave him two of his biggest hits, probably. Like, who knows? Yeah, like, he probably wrote some shit. What songs did he do for? I don't know. Oh, okay. You just it doesn't said, matter. Yeah. Hypothetically. No, no. Yeah. I was just trying to think if they were on a track together. No, they definitely have records yeah. together. Absolutely. I just can't. Yeah, I, 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 I don't get it because there's, there's, there's artists out there who are successful without using auto tone. People who can fucking belt, like, they sing their ass off and who are extremely successful. But then there's people who are extremely successful using auto tune. So, I mean, I don't I don't get how you can say T Pain fucked up music for artists, you know what I'm saying? Or for quote unquote real singers or whatever. I mean it doesn't help the GOAT over here deaf of auto tune, you know. Oh, I mean, that hurt it. too. So I'm sure like it was just an encompassing it was a all speed of that. bump. I remember <laughs> I remember being at uh no, I wasn't there. I saw a video, it was at rehab in Vegas a long time ago when ba- when um Jay Z and T Pain were beefing mm. about the whole auto tune thing. I saw a video where T Pain said, he said, uh, you know, he's talking shit about me using auto tune, but can Jay Z do this? And then he dropped one of his hits, like T Pain's own hits. Crowd went crazy. He's like, can he do this? And he just kept dropping hits. I'm like, you got a point, but I don't think Jay Z gives a shit. <laughs> like, I think Jay Z's doing all right without those hits. You know? yeah, <laughs> but but I see your point because right, these right, are massive right. songs. Come on, you know? man. Be careful who you go after. <laughs> yeah, you got to defend himself. You got you got to defend himself. You got to keep the, vi- the virality of it going. Yeah, yeah. You know, keep selling music. Yeah, 100 percent publicity stunts. I get it. I yeah. don't even own his catalog. Like, mm-hmm. talk to him. Mm. You what? You don't he even own his catalog. Mm. Oh. Well, that's a whole he other conversation. Sorry, yeah. guys. I mean, how yeah, much I, did T Pain sell his for? I know they've been all of them been selling their catalogs do you crazy think, amounts. I don't know, but I was gonna ask: Do you think that this is going to us as DJs? You think this is going to affect us playing Usher songs in the club? No, no. Yeah, someone asked me that. Like, Some of us are yeah. still playing Tory Lanes. <laughs> oh, I'm R still Kelly. playing Tory Lanes. Yeah, that yeah. track is hard. Yeah, like so it's track. like some people Yo, are still playing R Kelly. Tory with the baby on it. Did Tory come out clean though? I mean, they, because they it, it was, they, haven't, um, they haven't, they yeah. haven't proved that yeah. he did it. It's still, it's still an allegation. You know what I'm yeah, so it's not it's looking real. You know, I mean, at least with R. Kelly, like it's proven that oh, you yeah. did this shit, yeah, nigga. Yeah. We got you on tape doing <laughs> this shit. Jail. So, like, guess what? We, <laughs> no, he we, got himself on tape. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> guess what? <laughs> we we not playing R. Kelly. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. And you, you wonder why you're good. fighting for your life. Exactly. But with the Tory Lanez thing, shit, Tory Lanez still go off. So fuck it. If I'm gonna sneak a Tory Lanez track here and there. Yo, All right, his, cool. His I'm not playing as much as I used to, but right. I will play a track here and there. Mm-hmm. You playing that at um, at Sadiq, Tory Lanez? Fuck no, bro. You, no, I'm not playing no Tory Lanez at Sadiq. <laughs> no. No. All right, no. good to know. Good to know. Um, shoot, I think that pretty much does it for us. With 52 minute mark, I think we can end it there. Um, what else is on? Um, yeah. uh, we we can cover all this shit another time. Um, we have coming up on globalization. We just had, um, shoot, we got Delta this week. Shout out to my Italian brother. We had Matsu. We had Matsu last week. And then prior to that, just to show, oh, we had Eric Odina drop a Tupac set. Yep. So if you guys missed those, check them out. And after Delta, since you won't hear us for another week, we got Charisma. Um, Yeah. So Tuesday nights, us. 8 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, Sirius not, XM. Catch us on uh Mixed Cloud. Mixed Cloud. Yeah, and Mickey that is D's, M-I-K-I-D-Z. Show. Show. Oh no, there's no show on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so used to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just used to it. Um, you guys are on it though. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just habit. You know, it's like Clockwork like, around here, baby. When, when you see the arms, are, when the guys have the arms around each other Swag in the club, you know to play Swag Sir. <laughs> Marco. Let's go. You know, when oh. I hear the piano in Dreams and Nightmares, you, you're playing, you're, you're popping bottles. So what are we talking about? Oh, Fuck yeah, that was a moment on our podcast. <laughs> All right, if you could play March of Madness, Dreams and Nightmares, which one are you picking? Dreams it depends nightmares. on the crowd. Depends on the crowd. Yeah. Okay. I would go. I mean, what would I do? I would go Dreams. I was thinking, should I play Dreams and Nightmares in Boston? Like, will it go over well? Because it's one Boston, no, and they're Celtic fans. 
to the that's a lot of white people. <laughs> so Grand? I don't know if they're gonna no. celebrate it the same. Yeah. <laughs> They gonna run you out of Boston. Yeah, yeah, you play that shit. You, you, <laughs> hey, hey, you know, you know when you were pitching in college. You know, Randy, Randy go come on shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Costa, Costa, you brought your laptop, right? Uh -huh. Hey, you didn't cook. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna get him next time. Hey. I'm gonna get him next time, huh? Randy, walk up to you, be like. Nice. Yeah, I think, I think, hand me the ball. That's what I'm doing at the end of the day. I can take the ball at the end. This shit's about to close. It's cold. I am the closer. <laughs> oh, I am middle relief and closer. Oh, you know what? We know what other song went off. That was a, probably the second, arguably eh, first or second biggest song of the night was um, Mariah Carey. We belong together at the wood. Hmm. Mm. Like singing that shit to the top of their dude, lungs. Huh. It, I'm telling you, either the biggest or the second you biggest. You play the remix song. or original? No, the original. I just dropped it. 70 BPM. Dun, 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 middle of, the middle of night. <laughs> towards no, the night. no, towards, towards the end. I didn't uh, want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I was thinking, should I? Should I like? I'm just curious to know where. Bro, I, 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 no, I, I was thinking. Do I really want to show off right now and just show that I can drop this at middle of night for that will be like 130 ish, one to 130. Should I really flex and show my bravado by dropping this at one o'clock and then bringing them back? Or, you know, because they're going to be, I know they're going to sing along. Like, it's guaranteed they're going to sing along because I just had that much confidence in the song. And then play something and then get back into the club shit. Mm -hmm. But I was like, nah, do that. that Dreams and Nightmares. And then I'll play this later on. And then Tevin Campbell, Can We Talk? Yo. Oh, there's a lot of white people in here singing that song. I'm trying to tell you. Um, yo, that end of the night, like, sing-along set, mm -hmm. it's probably my favorite, bro. It's, yeah, like, it's the favorite best. Part. It's mm -hmm. the favorite um, part of the night. You you don't get so much crowd part participation. Like, it's stupid. Mm -hmm. And you just, you li literally just drop tracks. Mm -hmm. Like, no one's, you're rarely mixing them. You just boom, 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 boom. They're like, ah, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Bitches are like, you're making me so wet right now. Yeah, crew love. Crew love will do crew that love? too. Crew love? Yeah. That was my whole shit. I was like, they were like, yo, Rel is bodying this shit. I'm like, nigga, everybody do this same shit. <laughs> everybody. Yeah. Forbatum. The only song that I probably throw in there is Damaged by uh, her. Mm -hmm. That, But that shit worked like mm -hmm. clockwork too. Yeah, that's that's the challenge. Finding the sing-alongs that people don't use. Like, obviously, we're going to do Crew Love and, and some of those others. But um, in all my years of going out, we belong together. I've probably only heard that once that I can remember. Um, but but we, like you said, we all play the same single. Yeah, and, it, yeah. and it's fine. It's the end of the night. People yeah. are drunk. They're not going to say, we heard the other DJ do that last night. No. Play that shit. <laughs> Just like but if you surfing. can find that gem, <laughs> yep. I, you know, I, I think it works out better for mm -hmm. you. All right. True. We good? Yeah. Yes, all right. We out. Peace. Peace. Peace.